Today I'm making ciabatta bread. Ciabatta is a hard crusted bread with a soft holy interior and is one of the easiest breads I've ever made. I love bread, all kinds of bread. And while I don't have a ton of experience making my own bread, I know that there's nothing better than fresh homemade bread. Now you can make this at home without any special equipment, but since I have it, I'll be using my stand mixer today. You can turn on subtitles by pressing the CC button, and if you want to give this a try yourself, I'll be leaving all of the ingredients and their measurements in the description under the video. Enough yapping, let's get baking. Well, okay, we do have to make our pre-ferment or biga ahead of time. So into a large bowl, I'm adding some warm water, instant yeast, and bread flour. Now mix it all together with a spoon until there are no dry spots left. This just takes a minute or two of mixing. I don't think I needed this big of a bowl, but I wasn't really sure how big this might get. Anyway, cover it tightly with plastic wrap and let it sit at room temperature for anywhere between 12 and 24 hours. This biga helps add complexity to the bread's flavor, as well as keeping it light and preserving it for a longer amount of time. My biga sat for about 18 hours and is looking fluffy and bubbly and smelling fantastic. Now without any further ado, let's make some ciabatta bread. I'm scraping the edges of the bowl so the biga will slide out more easily and scooping it into the bowl of my stand mixer. Next, I'm adding some warm water, bread flour, salt, and yeast. And using my paddle attachment, I'm just getting this dough started on low speed for about 3 minutes. Just make sure you keep this low, otherwise you'll be splashing water and flour everywhere. Now that the flour and water have been incorporated, I'm going to scrape my paddle attachment and switch it out for a dough hook to finish mixing everything evenly and really develop the gluten on a medium high speed for about 6 minutes. And as with anything that requires any more than a low speed, I'm going to be hugging my mixer trying to reduce the shake on my table for the whole 6 minutes. Eventually I'll upgrade this table for something sturdier. This dough is looking beautiful, very smooth, sticky, and elastic. Let's go ahead and transfer it to a large, lightly oiled bowl, cover it tightly with plastic wrap, and let it sit and ferment at room temperature for 30 minutes. Now I mentioned that you don't need any equipment for this, and you really don't. If you don't have a stand mixer or just don't feel like using it, just add all your ingredients into a bowl and mix until everything looks evenly combined and there are no dry flour pockets left. 30 minutes later, we're going to uncover our beautifully floofy dough bowl and help build some extra gluten by stretching the sides of the dough up and pulling them over to the other side. I'm using an oiled rubber spatula, but you could also do this with your hands. Just make sure to keep them wet so the dough doesn't stick. I'm just going around and doing this until all sides have been stretched and pulled over before covering and fermenting another 30 minutes. Hey, I said this was an easy dough, not a fast one, but trust me, it'll be worth the wait. Another 30 minutes later, the dough is looking awesome really big and fluffy, and you're going to want to get your surface really really well coated with water. I really don't want my dough to stick. Scoop the dough out onto the wet table and wet your hands. Cause again, sticky dough is sticky. Now pull and stretch the dough out into a large thin rectangle. You kind of get to a point where it doesn't want to stretch much more. And that should be good enough. Next we're going to do a business letter fold. Pick up one side of our dough sheet and fold it in a little over halfway. Then grab the other side and fold in on top of the other side, like you would with a letter or pamphlet. This business letter fold will help build structure into the dough, expel some of the yeast CO2 and result in a higher bread with more holes, which is exactly what we want for our ciabatta. Now we're just going to roll this up like a fluffy little burrito, and using a rubber spatula or dough scraper to avoid deflating the aforementioned dough burrito, we're going to scoop it up and place it back into the bowl. Cover and sit for one hour this time. Now we're getting really close to the actual baking part of this recipe. The next step is where we decide how we want to cut this up and one final fermentation. I don't have a pizza peel to facilitate in transferring my bread to a pizza stone in the oven, so I've set a baking tray upside down and covered it with parchment paper. Next, we're going to want to heavily flour the top of the dough ball, our work surface, the parchment paper, anything that will come into contact with the dough. Now I'm carefully scraping the edges, again trying to avoid any deflation, and plopping the dough onto the floured table. And we've already floured what is now the bottom of the dough, so let's add some more flour on top. Gently press this out into a square shape and decide how you want to cut your loaves. Do you want to keep the traditional slipper shape? Just cut it down the middle. I think I want more smaller loaves, so I'm going to lightly flour my dough scraper, pop any large bubbles, then cut the dough in half, and then across a second time to leave me with four squarish loaves. Using the dough scraper, scoop them up one by one and transfer them to the floured parchment paper, making sure to leave room between them so they don't stick. 
Since I have less space between loaves in this direction, I'm going to pinch and fold the paper here to keep them from growing and sticking to each other. Now feel free to reshape, if needed. I just want to keep a neatly squared shape on these. That should be fine. I also don't think my pizza stone is big enough to fit all this dough, so I'm going to cut the parchment in half and bake these in two batches. Gently cover your little loaves with a damp towel and rest for the final time, one hour. At about 40 minutes in, I'm going to put a large cast iron pan in the bottom rack of my oven, my pizza stone on the middle rack above it, and then make sure to position the cast iron a little to the side. We're going to pour some water in here later to create some steam, which will help our ciabatta get an extra crusty crust. So I want the steam to reach the bread above and not just hit the pizza stone. Just move the pan a little to one side or the other and you should be fine. Now to get our pizza stone and oven ready for our bread, let's preheat to 500 and this should be ready for us about the same time as our dough. And once that final rest time is up, I'm going to cut my parchment paper to separate the pairs of dough so I can get these in and out of the oven more easily. I'll set these two off to the side and cover them back up so they don't dry out and spray these two with some water to help create some more steam in the oven. For the actual bake, let's bring our oven back down to 425, carefully slide the dough squares onto the hot pizza stone, cover them with an extra deep foil roasting pan to try and trap some of that steam. Now carefully with an oven mitt to protect your hand and arm, pour some boiling water into the cast iron pan, maybe a cup, and quickly close the oven door. Now we're gonna bake these covered for about 15 minutes before coming back to remove the foil pan so we can get some color, and baking another 15 minutes. I just used some tongs to pull the parchment paper back onto my baking tray. These look and smell so good. The hardest part is waiting for them to cool. And there you have it. Here's the rustic ciabatta bread that we made today. That yeasty, boozy smell is intoxicating. It's so freaking good. You can hear just how perfectly hard and crusty this is. And the inside is so soft and chewy. And you can really taste the resulting flavor of the biga. It's got a strong, nutty, yeasty flavor. You just can't beat freshly made bread. Give this soft, chewy bread a try. If you make your own ciabatta bread, share a picture on Instagram and tag me at Michael with 4 inches. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you're new, I would love to have you around. And if you'd like to watch another video, you can click right up here. Thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you all next Thursday.